Hi, welcome to this tutorial video on the external anatomy of the bovine stomach. I am Dr. Humphrey Simcock. In this tutorial video, I will explain the external anatomy of the bovine stomach in terms of its uh, compartments, surfaces, the grooves and uh, also the sacs of uh, the rumen. After watching this uh, tutorial video on the external anatomy of uh, the bovine stomach, you'll be able to identify and uh, name the four compartments of uh, the ruminant stomach. You'll be able to name the three parts that make up what is known as the four stomach of uh, the ruminant stomach. You'll also be able to identify the anatomical structures on the left surface and uh, the right surface of uh, the ruminant stomach. Also, you'll be able to name the grooves of uh, the rumen and you'll be able to explain their positions and uh, the ruminal sacs that they demarcate or they appear to demarcate externally. Finally, you'll also be able to name uh, the various sacs uh, of uh, the rumen. On this slide, I will provide some uh, general information on the ruminant stomach. I'll also give uh, the names of uh, the compartments that make up uh, the four stomach in ruminant animals. So the ruminant stomach has uh, four compartments and these uh, compartments include uh, the rumen, the reticulum, the omesum and uh, the abomesum. And uh, this arrangement is uh, based on how the food flows within the stomach of uh, the ruminant animal. So the ruminant stomach also occupies uh, almost 75% uh, of the abdominal cavity and uh, it fills the entire left abdominal uh, cavity and a large portion of uh, the right side of uh, the abdominal cavity as well. So you can see that it's uh, quite massive. The first three compartments of uh, the ruminant stomach, uh, that is the rumen, the reticulum and omesum, they are collectively known as uh, the four stomach of uh, the ruminant uh, stomach. And the rumen has uh, regular contractions and this is in order to move and uh, mix uh, the food and also to eliminate uh, the gases through what is called uh, eructation or something that is known as belching in human beings and then send these food particles back to the mouth to be rechewed or remasticated. The rumen is able to break down or digest cellulose through mechanical digestion and fermentation and this is with the assistance of symbiotic microbes such as bacteria, protozoa and fungi. And the main product of rumen digestion and fermentation are the, the, the volatile fatty acids or VFAs in short. Then uh, the component of uh, the ruminant stomach known as the reticulum collects uh, smaller digested particles and uh, moves these into the omesum while the larger particles remain in the rumen for further digestion and uh, regurgitation. Then the omesum contains laminae in its internal surface and uh, these laminae function in absorbing water and other substances from the digested materials. Then the abomesum is the true stomach and uh, this resembles uh, more or less the stomach of uh, the monogastric animal and it is an elongated sac which lies mainly on the ventral abdominal wall. On this slide, I will use the diagram on your right to explain the various anatomical structures that can be observed on the left or parietal surface of uh, the ruminant stomach and I'll also show the various grooves uh, that uh, appear to separate the rumen into various sacs from the outside. And please note that uh, this uh, diagram on your right is uh, obtained or sourced from uh, the book Sisson and Grossman's uh, The Anatomy of the Domestic Animals. Now the rumen of uh, the ruminant animal has uh, five sacs. And these sacs include uh, the antrium ruminus, or sometimes uh, known as uh, the cranial sac. It also has uh, the dorsal sac, the ventral sac, the cododorsal blind sac, and the cordoventral blind sac. And these are separated uh, externally by, or rather they appear to be separated externally by uh, various grooves, which we are going to look at shortly. The left longitudinal groove demarcates or separates the dorsal sac of uh, the rumen and uh, the ventral sac of uh, the rumen. So that arrow which is appearing there shows uh, the demarcation by the left longitudinal groove of uh, the dorsal sac 
and uh, the ventral sac. You can see that the dorsal sac is uh, quite uh, extensive. So it uh, extends from that point going caudally all the way up to that point. Then uh, from the dorsal end, it starts from uh, the dorsal curvature and uh, extends all the way up to the demarcation point where the left longitudinal groove is. And uh, then the ventral sac extends from uh, the cranial point going caudally up to that point and then from the dorsal end going ventrally up to the ventral curvature. So this uh, left longitudinal groove from outside it appears to be dividing the dorsal sac of the rumen from the ventral sac of the rumen. Now the ruminoreticular groove separates the reticulum from the antrium ruminis and uh, the antrium ruminis is uh, just the cranial part of uh, the dorsal sac of uh, the rumen and uh, this uh, ruminoreticular groove is as indicated by the arrow showing just now the brown arrow there so that indicates the demarcation between the reticulum on the cranial aspect and also the antrium ruminis which uh, I'm indicating there with uh, the marker. So the antrum ruminis extends from this point. It is normally shaped in a triangular form. So that's uh, the position of uh, the antrum ruminis. And uh, the antrum ruminis is separated from uh, the reticulum by the ruminoreticular groove. Then the cranial groove separates the ventral sac of the rumen from the antrium ruminis and that yellow arrow there is the one that is uh, separating the two sacs or compartments of uh, the rumen so you have on the ventral side the ventral sac of uh, the rumen and then on the dorsal cranial side the antrium ruminis being separated by the cranial groove then the caudal groove separates the cododosal blind sac and the cordoventral blind sacs. So that is the position of uh, the caudal groove separating the cododosal blind sac, which is being indicated there by the marker, from the cordoventral blind sac. So again, the caudal groove separates the cordodosal blind sac from the cordoventral blind sac. Then the left dorsal coronary groove separates uh, the dorsal sac of the rumen and the cordodosal blind sac. So this is indicated by the yellow line, the yellow uh, arrow. So the dorsal sac of the rumen, which is being indicated there by the marker, is separated from uh, the cordodosal blind sac by the left dorsal coronary groove which is in yellow there then the left ventral coronary groove separates the ventral sac of the rumen and the cordoventral sac or the cordoventral blind sac so the position of uh, the left ventral coronary groove is shown again by another yellow arrow there on the ventral aspect so this is uh, the groove that separates the cordoventral blind sac from the ventral sac of uh, the rumen so those are the various grooves that uh, appear to separate the rumen into various sacs from outside particularly on the left side of uh, the ruminant stomach but on the left side, you can also observe uh, other structures other than the sacs. So on the cranial aspect, you can see the reticulum. On the cranial dorsal aspect of uh, the ruminant stomach, you can see the reticulum on the left side. You can also see the abomasum on the ventral aspect, cranial ventral aspect of the rumen or of uh, the ruminant stomach. Then also on the dorsal aspect of the ruminant stomach, you can see the spleen which is located between the reticulum and uh, the dorsal sac of uh, the rumen 
So those are the components that can be seen on the left side or the parietal surface of uh, the ruminant uh, stomach. On this slide, I will show on the diagram the various structures and organs that are observed on the right side of, of uh, the ruminant stomach, which is sometimes referred to as the visceral surface. So in the previous slide, uh, we saw um, some of the structures that can be observed on the left side of uh, the stomach, which is also referred to as uh, the parietal surface of the stomach. So on this uh, side, we see various uh, structures. And uh, we can see the esophagus, which enters at uh, the cardia. And the cardia is just a region between uh, the reticulum and uh, the rumen, specifically the dorsal sac uh, of the rumen. Now, the ruminant esophagus functions uh, by directionary in ruminants, that is uh, allowing the animal to regurgitate the cud for further chewing. The other structure that we can see, of course, is uh, the reticulum. And uh, this uh, reticulum has a honeycomb uh, structure internally and its function is mainly to collect uh, smaller digester particles and then move them into the omezam while the larger particles remain in the rumen for further digestion. So that is the reticulum. Then the other organ that we can see is uh, of course the omezam and uh, this one uh, contains laminae internally and these laminae function in absorbing water and other substances from uh, the digested material. Then of course we can also see the abomesum and uh, this is uh, the true stomach and uh, this is uh, an elongated sac which uh, normally lies uh, on the abdominal floor. The other structures that we can see include of course the duodenum which is uh, the beginning of uh, the small intestine and also we can see the dorsal sac of the rumen as well as uh, the ventral sac of uh, the rumen. The other structures include uh, the longitudinal, or rather the right longitudinal groove, which we saw on the other side as uh, the left longitudinal groove. So the left longitudinal groove essentially connects to the right longitudinal groove, and it is indicated uh, by that mark that I'm showing there, where one is. Then also we can see the caudal groove, again, which was observed on the other side, and that's the caudal groove. We can also see the right dorsal coronary groove, which is represented by th three, and that's the right dorsal coronary groove. We can also see the right ventral coronary groove, so that's the right ventral coronary groove. Then we can also see the cododosal blind sac, that is uh, the small aspect being shown there, that's the cododosal blind sac. And we can also see the codoventral blind sac, represented there by that uh, indication there. That's the codoventral blind sac. The pylorus is also observable, shown as seven there. So that is the pylorus, which is uh, the terminal part of uh, the abomesum. So those are the components that you see on the right side of uh, the ruminant stomach, or what is called uh, the visceral surface of uh, the ruminant stomach. You have now come to the end of uh, this tutorial video. Having gone through this uh, tutorial video on the external anatomy of uh, the bovine stomach, you should be able to identify and uh, name the four compartments of uh, the ruminant stomach. You should also be able to name the three parts that make up uh, the four stomach of uh, the ruminant stomach. Also, you should be able to identify uh, the anatomical structures on the left surface and the right surface of uh, the ruminant stomach. In addition, you should be able to name the grooves of uh, the rumen and you should also be able to explain their positions and uh, identify the sacs of uh, the rumen that they demarcate externally. And uh, finally, you should be able to name the sacs of uh, the rumen. Thank you for watching.